lessons. Um, this is Unity, and I want to talk about um, this video. I want to talk about why I started like wearing hand painting and why I'm um, In 2006, I went to a Black Freedom Festival in Virginia. Um, it was Richmond, yeah, Richmond, Virginia. It was happily married today. And I had bought a pair of earrings from an elder sister. Uh, she had like a lot of uh, uh, brass, copper, silver, all kind of little stuff. But she had four of hand painted wooden earrings. So some of them was like red, black, and green. It was real simply made. So I asked my sister how much wooden earrings she like $15. And I was like, okay. So I picked up. Got them wrapped up because this pair of earrings inspired Blabber House earrings. I picked up these. They're um, just some earrings that's on a probably 3.5 um, inch wood piece. It's wrapped with a bead. Um, right here look like uh, like a plastic off glued on. This right here was silver. It's kind of old because there's no stick. And there was no varnish. It was just these earrings inspired Wally and Pink earrings. And I would always look at these earrings. Um, and I would be like, you know, for a whole year I looked at the earrings and I'm like, you know what? I want to do me some earrings, but I want to put them in my own way. So I would just, and then I would look at these earrings. And people, people would like these earrings. What are you doing now? For a freedom festival. And then, you know, like I said, they, they got like little spots and little stuff on it because they're so old and they didn't have a protective gloss on them. And I, my thing was, I don't want to change them. I mean, I'm, I'm a painter now, so I can go in and redo them, but I don't want to keep them just like they are because they are black history. So anyway, for like an hour, I mean like um, a year after, um, I purchased, purchased these earrings from the sister. I can't think of her name. I had got her information because at that time I was selling a lot of culture jewelry and stuff like that, and I wanted to get some of her jewelry wholesale. So she wrote her in her, um, her information down in a little piece of paper. And inshallah, I could find it because I really want to let her know what she inspired. I mean, Boa was going to a mini empire. Boa was hand the earrings, and this was the, like really truly inspired Boa House. So. Probably like a year later, well it was about a year, a couple of months later, and I was in 07, 2007, I was laying on my sofa and I had a vision. And in the vision, Almighty God Allah was talking to me and he said, do the earring. Do it. So I woke up, uh, a friend of mine took me to an arts and craft store here. Um, I bought wood, uh, hooks and all this stuff, paint. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just listened to the obedience to a lot of command and I started quote unquote making hand painted earrings. And when I started making hand painted earrings, it was a mix. It was like, it took me forever to make a pair. A pair took about a week. Um, wire went in my finger. I did like paint inside. It was a trip, but the thing was, I kept at it. So the spirit in the God in me was being obedient to Almighty oh God, a lot of me do it, so I did it. So I made probably like, I think 15 pounds of range, which probably took me about two weeks. And I took them to Poetry Night here in Tallahassee, Black on Black Rhyme, and I put them out, and people just liked them. Um, when I first started, earrings like this probably would be about $30, $30.40. Because it took so long for me to make them that I couldn't, um, it just took so long that all of them were just one of a kind. A lot of stuff that I do now is mainly duplicated, but back then it wasn't because I, it took so long to make a pair of earrings. Now I can make a pair of earrings within 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes straight, all done. I reckon everything. So, um, when I took the earrings to Black on Black Lines and Make, I'm like, wow, you know, they sold. And I'm like, okay. So from there, I, like I said, I was selling all kinds of stuff, you know, incense oils, 
chickies, after they close, books, just everything. And um, once I sold those, I mean, I sold all that stuff, so I took the earrings to my spot at the outdoor flea market here in Tallahassee. And people started buying them. My little small ones, I was selling for like 15, 15, 12 dollars. Just that simple black power. Wasn't no little, really wasn't that really creative, but just the point of them being hand painted and handmade, people wanted them. So I um, took this, I showed a friend of mine, um, my Carmen Harmony Rutland, and I'm gonna put her information down because she has an Etsy shop. She makes clothes and stuff like that. And I was like, Harmony, look what I made. And she was like, you were always coming up with something. So she started kind of creating the earrings with me too. So we, that's when she created our hand painted earrings, my space page. And it took off. When I tell you, I didn't even have a, hand, a website. I just had, uh, um, well, I did have a free website, eCreator, which I still have. But we made so I made, made so much so many sales from the MySpace page. I would just send um, invoices to people emails, and it just blew. And it just blew. I mean, just bending everywhere. I, the earrings, even though we had all this other stuff we were selling, the earrings just went. People just went crazy. They didn't care if it was twenty, thirty, forty dollars. It was unique, and people wanted the earrings. So. um that's how Blow Out Hand Painted Earrings started. And it's, 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 it's not funny, but everything is in divine order. When I was like nine years old, my mom had a um, variety shop. It was called Anissa Chabaz Variety Shop. And I was in the fourth grade, and she would sell like, you know, costume earrings for like a dollar. So I would take, mainly take, I took the earrings from my mom's shop these earrings which was for grown women and take them to school and I was selling for a nickel. So, and then I got, you know, court selling earrings. Um, my teacher, he was a Caucasian man, he told me I couldn't sell earrings in school and, you know, asked me where I got them. I told him I got them, from my, got them from my, my mother's shop. So, it's, it, um, I know in numerology, nine is a number of completion and it's like everything was in divine order. I mean, I always sold earrings. I always had an earring fetish. And it's like, well, it's 2012 now, and Boabla earrings are like, it's like, I don't really have to do so much advertising no more. It's just like, I think I'm like, I'm getting a seller, um, some sales like every day or every other day. And I'm dealing with wholesale, wholesale orders. I'm dealing with my orders in places I never heard of. Um, stuff is being shipped to France and Switzerland and Italy and Greece and um, uh, London and Australia, um, America, all majority of a lot of places in America, Hawaii, Barbados. I mean, I'm just so blessed to be, listen to Almighty God and do the will what he told me to do. And, you know, it just came. I'm just so blessed. And, I'm, and, and, and from that, I became an artist. Like, I was always creative. But with the earrings, I started drawing. Like, I wasn't drawing. And from there, I do my paintings. From there, I'm creating all kinds of stuff. I'm creating furniture now. I'm creating, I'm working on some mirrors, I'm working on some stuff. I'm working on so much stuff. And uh, the thing is, just being obedient. And I think, this, I know the sister that inspired these earrings, that did these earrings. You know, a lot of times when we're going to be something, we, it's all we already destined to be. I don't believe in luck. I don't. I believe in divine order. I know that when I got saved, when I go back to when I was nine, and I was selling earrings, and, and like a numerology, that's the number of completion. It was always destined for me to meet this sister and start doing these earrings, and I'm just so blessed. And these earrings are just one go out of history. I really don't wear them anymore, but I will wear them, but I would never change the hooks for anything. I don't care how old they get. I would never varnish them, spots and everything on the state because these would inspire the way I was campaigning here. And um, I thank a lot for meeting that sister. I thank a lot for me for being obedient to the call. And it's not about, I mean, earrings, my earrings are very spiritual to me. 
there's certain things I get. A lot of, you know, people ask me to put certain things on it. I won't. If it's not the um, very positive, uplifting, um, black power, Islam, you know, RBG, all the stuff that I believe in as a black woman, I would not put it on earrings. I done had some crazy stuff coming to me, asking me to put on earrings, and I'm not going to do it because it's a message. It's, it's a message, and it's history, and I want to put I'm going to put history on my earrings, and I thank Almighty God that there's so much more that I can do with these outside of being righteous and spiritual, and I could probably make all this money, but I know it won't last. So I thank Almighty God that I stand firm for what I believe and putting on my earrings, and people support it, and um, I guess that's mainly it. But I just wanted to let y'all know what started go out of hand painting earrings. And I'm going to continue to do what I do. And y'all going to see some more beautiful stuff that I'm working on um, within the next couple of months. But that's mainly it. And peace and blessings. And thank you for listening. And that's mainly it. Long. <laughs>